fine tune uh, what can be perfect later. And also we actively listen to the participants on what do they actually want from football. And then uh, obviously uh, we have vocal minorities who really hated the no tackle rule. Uh, we have uh, the majority who loves the no tackle rule mere uh, aspect because like in the end for them, they orang dapat pergi balik kerja esok, dia orang boleh dapat pergi jumpa family dia lepas dia orang main bola. So, uh, this are the not, kind of not, thing. Not being injured or not being, yeah, yeah. you know. Yeah, not not being <laughs> injured physically and not being in, injured emotionally. So, okay. uh, itu, itu, itu penting. Then, obviously, we had, uh, so we call it Liga Gila. Then, obviously, uh, we had, there was a lot of trial and errors, but up until maybe Liga Gila 3, things were perfect lah, meaning macam everyone got what we want. So, it was a really um, long work of progress. So, in terms of how many times trial and errors, I would say about 10 times we had to do this. Uh, how, big, how, how big is the community now? I mean, it's been years already, right? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so, uh, so basically, uh, just to answer that question in a bit. Um, okay. So basically, much from Liga Gila, we uh, we reorganize ourselves, uh, not from the the Galactic Republic to the Galactic Empire, but we reorganize ourselves from Liga Gila to JD. We just call ourselves recreational football because okay. one thing we realize that when people use the term social, social ni dah dah diguna terlalu banyak and then bila people uh, regu- people yang tak pernah main bola they equate re- social football into M- as is uh, semi professional uh, amateur football uh, state liga 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 negeri so mm. there was a bit of a fear when we use the term social uh, so we decided to call it recreational because it's a new it's a new term banyak orang tak pernah dengar sangat so we call it ourselves recreasi lah yeah, uh, fresh 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 yeah it's, it's yeah. something fresh lah Uh, symbolic uh, apa namanya uh, we 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 redesign the term lah kan so um, then obviously since that that liga gila ni tu sampai uh, December 2019 we actually have a database of more than six about 6000 people yang sign up yang nak main bola sepak holy crap seriously 6000 6000 6000 orang ni nak ribu ah strong 6000 okay uh, apa Uh, 20, uh, 25% of them are women and and these are these are recreational football enthusiasts 6000 correct these. we 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 have bersihkan the list uh, multiple times meaning tak ada mm-hmm. duplicate uh, nombor yang aktif um, apa lagi ya nombor yang aktif no duplicate okay inside the sign up sheet we have a uh, listing meaning meaning kata macam okay uh, why do you want to play recreational football with us kalau orang letak reasons macam Okay, saya nak guna platform ini untuk masuk uh, JDT, nak masuk Selangor FC. Okay, itu kena cut lah. Ada, 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 ada. ada. No way, seriously? Ada, 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 ada. ada. <laughs> okay. Ada juga yang macam, oh saya nak masuk program ni sebab nak cari boyfriend, saya nak cari girlfriend. Itu pun kena cut, sorry. <laughs> itu pun kena cut. Ayuh. <laughs> sorry, benda tu I kena cut. Uh, because we do not want to have that 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 that, that internal drama apa semua kan. So, um, apa, yeah, 6,000 uh, people yang nak main, and then uh, even people, we have people from like, daripada Canada for some reason heard of us to sign up for some reason. Uh, and obviously the furthest person that has played uh, here is actually you, you know, you you came all the way from Kemaman, obviously you came came to KL for work, apa semua kan. Yeah, uh, yeah. Before you uh, was uh, Syed and Fuad from Kuantan. They came... Yeah. Uh, so they they came from Kuantan to play, then they're on Bali. Then obviously we have someone from Ipoh who actually came drive and get to Bali. Uh, then someone from Port Dickson, Seremban. So we have a lot of people. And I mean, even just before the lockdown happened, actually we had someone from Kota Kinabalu actually who wanted to fly over. They no way. They 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 convention. They the convention dekat Shalam, and then okay. they nak main they nak main program kita. Uh, so he really pleaded pleaded with me for about a year right? not through padang oleh siapa but through brother brother kala so he pleaded with me that he nak main what happened next lockdown yeah i mean this is this is really cool right because um i i travel a lot for work right not just to kl but you know every every state there uh, here in the country and sometimes you know when when I, when i go to work to a particular state right and i'll be staying there for like you know a week or so um I just don't have groups of friends to I don't have a group of friends in 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 certain states whereby you know I can bring along my boot, football boots or futsal shoes and then just join them in in the evening 
But um, I think it's really cool what you have, right? It, it gives these kinds of opportunities, like people like myself from the chat from Kota Kinabalu that you talked about, that we go for our work, go to a conference or come for work in KL, for example, for three, four days. And then we can pack along our football boots or our football gear and then join you guys whenever you guys play are playing. And it's purely recreational. That means that I can wake up tomorrow morning not feeling any kind of bruises, as you said, physically or emotionally, and then just get back to work. You know, it's and just you, purely fitness. And and you get you get about five to ten new followers on Instagram and Twitter because you make new friends. Yeah, yeah, I make new friends. Yeah, that's the that's that's one of the most wonderful things as well, um, um, because it's not very it's 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 totally people that you don't know, right? I mean, like um, when I first came, it's absolutely people that I don't know. But I, when I was talking to the others who were there, who have been constantly in your circle, I mean, they always tell me that there are always new people, always new faces, right? So there's always opportunity for you to make new friends and acquaintances. And I think that's really, really fun. Right, let's talk about, guys, uh, I, I want to talk about the lockdown, right? Because that's the elephant in the room. Right? There's a lot of things that we want to talk about when, it, when we talk about sports culture and excellence. But let's, let, let's, let's, let's remove the elephant uh, from the room and let's talk about this lockdown um my question would be jamie can you can you answer this first is like um how does this how, how does the lockdown um or the restrictive uh operating procedures um result uh do you think that it has it causes a long lasting effect on put on the participation of uh, your program <laughs> Murung jadi deh. I know, I know, I know, Jamie. But we need, we need, you know, it's it's, it's the elephant in the room that we need to chuck aside first, yeah. Ada. Uh, um. Obviously, uh, banyak orang kata it's definitely tak boleh nak nak organise satu apa pun. Mm-hmm. Um. I mean, like dalam group memang ramai lah tanya bila bila nak buat and then the, apa the these ladies making fun lah kita training ni lah secara virtual lah, apalah, sepak bola lah, kau sepak sini, aku sepak sana. So basically memang tak ada apa yang dapat di, dilakukan sangat. Yang hanya mampu adalah memutar semula gambar-gambar yang ditangkap. <laughs> no yes. Ni no sahajik. <laughs> Jamie, do you think, do you foresee that participation in your program would go down? Let's say uh, once once everything goes back to normal, do you think that you will oh. still receive the kind of response like your like ni lah, yeah, sepanjang dah sepanjang dah tiga kali lockdown ni. Uh, mm-hmm. First, uh, PKP dibuka dibenarkan kita mengadakan atau menganjurkan aktiviti. Huh, mm-hmm. tak sampai 24 hours, saya tak payah post dekat social media dalam group sahaja. Reply reply semua nak main semua macam macam orang gila lah macam orang kemaruk gila nak main bola itulah itulah dia saya so, like pernah je aku buat poster post dekat social media sekali I don't have to look anywhere it's actually dalam group sahaja so everyone keep responding and then macam yelah kita pun faham masing-masing ada group WhatsApp yang melambak mm-hmm. so bila ngam-ngam they just open ah dah penuh dah penuh list eh ada siapa tak main tak ada siapa yang tak edit main sampai to that extent So okay. macam uh, semua orang memang excited. Uh, I would say kemaruk jugalah nak main bola, nak sepak bola. Semua orang memang macam tak sabar-sabar. So when it comes to even the second one also and the third one, uh, the third one ni tak tahu bila kan. But yeah, yang mampu dibuat sekarang ni lah semua orang kadang throwback, kadang post balik ke dalam group, eh bila nak sepak bola and everything lah. So yeah, it's, itu je lah. Okay, Mengapa? That's mm-hmm. good. That's good because um, I've I've come across a few uh, articles that were saying that you know um, these lockdowns and restriction would necessarily have a uh, negative impact uh, on, in the long run, uh, whereby people are going to be less participative in the sports. But I guess it's not for your case. How is, is it? Is it the same for you, mate? Okay. Um, they mention uh, the first MCO lepas la lifted. Uh, apa? on the June 15, eh, July 15 tahun lepas kan. Mm-hmm. Alamak, saya macam dah lebih setahun, nak dekat setahun dah. Okay, uh, <laughs> traumatic flashbacks. Um, <laughs> the, the, it was okay, meaning macam, I think the cases were really low, so the confidence of people to main bola tu tinggi. Okay? And okay. also around that time, there was a moratorium. 
Mm-hmm. Okay. So Betul. factor ekonomi helped and factor kesihatan also uh, membenarkan orang dapatkan confidence into datang balik. It's like it's like, it's like it's like the vaccine lah macam like why are people hesitant to to take the vaccine because there's no there's not a lot of confidence. So as long as uh, apa people in management in administration tunjukkan that is uh, look we are doing our jobs and and orang are confident with the product people will participate in the product. And then everything huh? start, started to slide bila uh, Sabah election datang. So, um, hmm. on late September, there was a lot of macam takut in, around the community about macam like, oh, um, I can't I can't risk I can't risk datang sebab, you know, I have kids and I ada kerja. You know, okay. so macam benda-benda macam tu berlaku. And then I, the last session that we had uh, tahun lepas was on October 1st. This one, I memang vividly remember lah. Okay. So our list was 33 people because we play seven aside football dekat uh, Rhino KV Rina Shalam. Okay. So we we have 33 people. Our list dropped from 33. We had a waiting list of uh, seven. Uh, so it's total 40 lah kan? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. That list dropped from 33 sampai 18. Oh, wow. Why is Kemanyak- that? Kebanyakan orang semua tu, obviously uh, it, it, it rained heavily that night tapi a lot of the reasons was actually because they're takut because of the virus. I see, I see. Ah, so it's all about confidence, confidence in in participating ke tak. So and then obviously when we uh and then obviously uh ever uh, CMCO started lah and then that was the second lockdown for us lah in terms of sports. But so bila the next uh lockdown was uplifted it was only for like what four days and uh, New Year's Day but so tak sampai seminggu eh, tak sampai lima hari uh tak boleh main bola kan. Uh Then obviously football came back in uh, March. We uh-huh. only organized a few sessions saja. Itu pun Betul. confidence pun tak tak tinggi because uh, number one, um, the virus is still spreading inside uh, across the community. There uh-huh. isn't something macam like that uh, trustworthy punya confidence from the authorities that hey you can play sports it's okay. Pasal tak ada macam ambassadors yang advocate for it. Ke benda-benda macam tu lah kan. So benda tu jadi orang takut lah. Uh, untuk main bola sepak and also uh, obviously the, another factor is uh, rentas daerah lah because some people who really want to play but they are really far from the venue so itu pun another factor so ada banyak-banyak factor uh, realistically after doing a lot of active listening to a lot of people who has texted me message me and also spoke to me on zoom and uh, private uh, clubhouse in my rooms and um, what I can say is that bila case dah turun to maybe like 200 then the confidence you akan datang balik. Oh, uh, okay. yeah. Uh, that's that's the that's the rough estimate yang I dapat lah at the same time pun orang dah vaksin dua kali. However, orang yang uh-huh. ada, people who has kids will be even more hesitant to participate because they do not want to spread the virus to their kids. So because keep in mind we do have parents yang main dengan kita. Betul. Okay. Ah, so Betul. itu pun another another, another factor. Hey guys, uh, sorry you know for for doing this but uh, kalau korang semua enjoy this session just share lah dekat uh, social media. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Thanks thanks for the shout out mate. Yeah, did, did I answer your question? Yes, yes it does. Uh, that's really interesting because um, so I think it all boils down to how we mitigate uh, the pandemic, isn't it? Like uh, it's not really just the lockdown, right? No, I mean it's also it's also about people's perception on how this pandemic has been, you know, uh, um, fully managed with the vaccines, with uh, SOPs. Because I, I, I think from what you mentioned, Carl, I think like um, if, if, we, if we don't have lockdowns, but people still perceive that, you know, um, the fact that not a lot of majority of Malaysians have completed their vaccines and, um, uh, and the virus is still somewhat above let's say uh, cases above 200 it will still affect the participation rates right yep from our research lah but i think it varies from from different organization to organization maybe jamie has a different data mobile has a different data new waves ada different data and so on and so forth lah hmm, okay, but okay. Macam, macam i uh you must even i mean like of course uh, kita, uh bukan nak kata kita berbangga dengan yang Komuniti bola ni tidak ada kes uh, apa COVID, tapi hmm. dari segi awareness dan apa rasa bertanggungjawab setiap orang yang nak join our session, uh, orang kata melebihi segalanya. Uh, I mean like 
hmm, I do uh, uh, Sebab bila Let's say lah Dia dah bubuh nama Dia akan macam I, I selalu pesan Kata Kalau tak sihat Kalau tak Kalau begini-begini Silalah beritahu Sebab kita pun Tak nak membahayakan Keliling Dan kita pun tak tahu Kita pergi mana Orang yang kita jumpa pun pergi mana So uh, I am thankful and grateful because most of my players do that. Dia akan memang ada I mean like towards I mean of course kita sakit hati. But then again bila kita ada orang-orang yang macam ni yang yang orang kata memikirkan nyawa dan kesihatan semua orang. So mm-hmm. kita kita bersyukurlah sebab kita pun sebab I selalu cakap kalau jangan ingat hanya kerana seorang kita je maksudnya WSF dia tak uh, takkan memberi impact pada orang lain. Hanya jangan nanti, sebab nanti uh, because of this one case orang lain pun tak boleh main bola. Not just not just WS, uh, Boba and everyone yang ada padang semua yang ada group masing-masing semua tak boleh main. So uh, I bersyukur juga lah. Most of the players memang orang ambil uh, orang kata precaution. Memang ambil sikap hati-hati. Dia terus cakap Jimmy. So sorry uh, cancer terpaksa cancer scan-scan because of this. Kadang-kadang yang even ada contact rampat pun dia cakap I think it's better for me to stay at home and uh, I mean like macam mana kita nak rampat? I mean like some or, setengah orang memanglah ada yang kemaruk main bola but then again bila ada orang yang bertanggungjawab cakap eh aku rasa baik aku duduk rumah then that's orang kata menunjukkan lah level orang yang main bola orang kata community main bola ni berbeza lah sikit dengan setengah-setengah orang maksudnya rasa bertanggungjawab tu tinggi lagi lah And that's yeah. good, right? Because and we don't we don't have a football cluster. But w- w- what about in other sports? I know that we don't have a cluster for football. What about in other sports? Do you guys know? Rasanya macam tak. Kalau pun ada wawang alam, kalau pun ada mungkin tak tinggi dan terus di orang kata dihentikan Manageable. maksudnya dah. Yes, yes. Be- boleh uh, boleh di manage boleh di manage lah. Boleh di apa orang kata di stop kan? Maksudnya orang pun ambil precaution. So, okay lah, better not to main. Even main badminton, I think kebanyakan sports pun macam badminton pun, I tak pernah dengar jugalah ada yeah, cluster too. or ca- cases lah. Uh. That's good, right? That's in, if the lockdown is going to be, is going to end, I think mm-hmm. we'll be the first industry to reopen. InsyaAllah. Ya ke? Mana Azmin Ali? Come on, Kak. Be hopeful, Kak. Hopeful. Mana Azmin Ali? Cari dia, tanpa dia. <laughs> Ah, let's be hopeful man Yeah Hopeful kita tak kena lockdown 4 kali kot Sebenarnya tu perlu Walaupun kita sakit hati ah, Itulah nah, I don't I don't mind Necessary race apa semua tu But give us a plan lah Macam like okay kita, Is that an exit strategy From this government Sorry lah Okay I'll Well I'll, I'll probably bring this up In the next session yeah? About whether there's an exit Exit strategy or not But um, I think I think at the moment Uh At the moment, um, I I'm just being hopeful that uh, once the lockdown ends, I think a lot of sports can start, you know, um, rolling, rolling back. Uh, it would be wonderful if that's the case. But anyway, now so we've moved the elephant from the from the room. So let's talk about uh, you guys. I mean, um, talk about leadership, right, in sports. Uh, uh, Jamie, are you are you a former national athlete or? Are oh, tak adalah. No, really. Saya, saya perasan je. And that's the thing, right? <laughs> Guys, that's the thing, that's that that's the thing that fascinates me, right? When I look at you, when I look at Carl, right? Um you guys are individuals who are not elite or former elite athletes, right? Um and you guys start up this community and and the unique thing about this community that you guys started up is a community that is very inclusive, right? It's color blind, it's shape blind. You know, it's 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 absolutely inclusive. My question is, uh, do you think that um, when you have former national athletes in places of power, right, uh, it will result in policies that are more skewed towards sporting excellence rather than the democratization of the sport? What do you think? Do you think that? Do you think that if you guys were uh, elite athletes? Would you guys be doing the same thing? Very, <laughs> yeah, very interesting question. Uh, Because I don't okay. see anyone with that kind of character. I mean, you guys are different, and 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 and, and that and that difference is maybe why we're having this conversation and and community startups like you guys. 
share with hmm. me what do you think dia Tau. macam dia macam cerita mighty ducks lah you know <laughs> Serious, you, and movies, you and movie references, ah. Huh? One down, four to go. Okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I notice. I notice. One down, four to go. Uh, okay. Uh, kalau tengok balik all these like sports movies kan, it requires both uh, nature and nature punya combination, and also it depends on who is the athlete. Meaning, macam okay, can like to answer your question kan, you said. The question was if there was an elite athlete in part of the policy making up a similar to, would things be different? Would things be policy driven towards create more elite athlete ke atau more grassroots near accessibility, yeah. democratization up a similar to? It yeah. totally depends on that person or that group of people punya upbringing. Betul. Meaning, uh, apakah dia punya journey throughout the near years from youth until professional, you know? That, uh, would that person jadi macam like Gordon Bombay from uh, Mighty Ducks? Would that person be like Ted Lasso from Ted Lasso? You know, so macam, uh, you know, macam even even like uh, Johnny Lawrence from Cobra Kai pun another example. You know, so, <laughs> yeah. Karate Kid. Karate Kid, you know. Uh, even like what, Herman Boone daripada Remember the Titans. Uh, for references lah, settle. Man, you um, dah settle lah all the references. <laughs> Sempat uh, lagi dia balik ni. Sempat. <laughs> um, apa? It really depends on that person's upbringing because like my upbringing was really rough because like I was a like like overweight kid, you know, that 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 always been picked last to main bola apa semua tu and so on so forth. Then finally I went to a taman near my house. I found a group of people who nak main bola apa semua tu just for fun. And that just that 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 really carried me out. And also another uh, like movie reference like The School of Rock. You know, mm. you have a you have a group of misfits, apa semua tu. I mean, like all all these movies are a group of misfits and people who are uh, shunned away from society and apa semua never been given a chance to really shape the ramai actual tal- the talent, mm-hmm. the, the their passionate talent, apa semua tu. So it really to answer your question, it really depends on the upbringing of the in, of the individual or the groups of individuals who are part of that uh, leadership new role. If we have someone who memang from T20 daripada birth sampai T20 sampai dia masuk into the policy making me se- sector without having a, a personal journey apa semua tu then susah lah to 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 democratize uh, di dia macam oleh kaki lah what, what about you Jamie like what 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 do you think is in your DNA <laughs> what is it that's in your DNA that moves you to set up uh, WSF okay dia bermula daripada okay basically I start main futsal secara suka-suka secara orang kata join saja and then it got serious bila kita ada team dan team tu kita kita join ada training so but at the end of the day uh, hasil dia tak tahu lah bandingkan dengan Malaysia train-train asyik kalah aja <laughs> so <laughs> dia <laughs> dia bermula dengan <coughs> kekecewaan itu so I was thinking sebenarnya, sebenarnya wujud ke tidak bola sepak wanita ataupun futsal wanita kat Malaysia ni adakah pihak-pihak yang sepatutnya bertanggungjawab membantu menjana me, apa oh bahasa bahasa eh, apa membantu oh kata susu galuh perjalanan pemain-pemain wanita ni so ah oh, okay. so kekecewaan tu ada walaupun kita bukan national player ataupun pro ataupun elite ke apa semua so basically macam I was thinking like macam what's the point pergi training uh, asyik kalah bila pergi tournament ke pergi friendly so I leave the team and uh, this is where macam I create uh, WSF ni it's because untuk I think there's a benda yang tak habis sebenarnya ataupun I was uh, thinking macam benda ni sepatutnya pergi, boleh pergi jauh sebab bila I start bekerja di dalam organisasi ini it's Uh, a big, uh, orang kata, I terkejut sebenarnya kita ada history yang tak dibanggakan. Uh, oh, di mana, okay. ah, ya, ya, ya. Sebabnya bola sepak wanita tu kalau ikut sejarah, dia bermula daripada, I pun tak ingat tapi uh, kiranya macam kenapa ada piala Tun Sharifah, maksudnya zaman piala, uh, Tunku Agraman. So, uh, sejarah dia terlalu lama dan uh, pelik je, kita, kalau dulu kita, uh, kalau ikutkan uh, pasukan bola sepak wanita tu sebenarnya antara yang terbaik di Southeast Asia. Tapi di mana kita sekarang? Uh, so, uh, kalau 
kalau kita nak bermula dengan sesuatu yang dah ada tapi kita tak kembangkan dan kita, dan kita tak perbaiki so kat situ je lah kita so kita kita tak pergi mana lah so berdasarkan keadaan itu I like okay lah why not I create this it's uh, memang untuk suka-suka memang untuk rekreasi tapi kita nak menggalakkan partisipan tu daripada wanita dan kita tengok daripada mana yang boleh kita kita bawa dia orang ni. Uh, I mean I like some add one. I think it's very really much I think it's very much straightforward, right? Like I mean like because because you're a woman and mm-hmm. uh, and you see and you see the noticeable uh, lack of excitement uh, mm. for the development or investment into oh. women's sport and therefore you take up this um, role yeah, walaupun, to, to, walaupun, to make walaupun, that change. Uh, walaupun kita pun tidak di, dibantu atau diberi apa dana sekali pun kita kita hmm. pergi sebab kita minat. Uh, kita buat benda tu sebab kita minat dan kita nak tengok benda tu bukan mati kat situ saja. So berbekalkan dengan minat dan juga keinginan melihat sesuatu lebih baik and kebetulan pula kerja dalam industri ni uh, dan juga bila dah start ambil coaching license So I was like, okay lah, menangkan umur pun dah, dah meningkat, kita kita cubalah uh, mengadakan, kita bermulalah daripada daripada suka-suka, daripada social, daripada grassroots, daripada orang kata tak ada apa. Sebab kita, sebab for me, bola sepak, it's a, satu lagi, dia, dia me, menyatukan semua orang regardless uh, pandai main ke. Uh, That's what it should be, right? That's what it yeah. should be, it's supposed to Betul. unite. Hmm. So benda tu simple je tapi yang complicated kan ya keadaan lah atau, ataupun manusia tu sendiri <laughs> uh, So ki, uh, <laughs> so benda yang kata But then again ya yeah, uh, for me kalau uh, Macam Carl cakap tadi kalau upbringing seseorang itu Dia mungkin mementingkan diri Ataupun bukan untuk uh, ke, ke, kesejahteraan sejagat Wah <laughs> So, nice. <laughs> so, 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 so it has nothing to do whether you're a former national athlete or not, right? It's just about yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, And then satu lagi, kita nak meneruskan legasi hmm. And then macam, kita bukan nak, uh, hanya ada satu Safawi Ataupun hanya ada satu Steffi Ataupun hanya ada satu Intan Sarah Ataupun, uh, yelah, orang su- rakyat Malaysia hanya mengenali pemain-pemain lelaki uh, bola sepak Malaysia, cuba sebut uh, pemain-pemain wanita Malaysia. Ada orang ingat, melainkan yang orang kata tengah... The one that you mentioned. The one that you mentioned. Yes. That's okay, it. Yang tengah famous sekarang, that's it. Padahal, bila bila I berada... I sebenarnya start daripada tak tahu sepak bola apa. Tapi bila kita tahu, dan kita macam, eh kenapa tak ada... Bukanlah kita mengharapkan tapet merah untuk orang, Tapi, maksudnya kenapa tiada orang kata pengikrafan sedikit pun untuk diorang-diorang ni. Sedangkan diorang masih ada, ada yang masih hidup, masih lagi gagah, masih lagi orang kata berjuang untuk mem- membangunkan bola sepak ni tapi orang kata dipandang sepanang sepi, diletak tepi dan yelah. So, okay, Jamie, Jamie, I, I got a question for you. I got a question yes. for you, right? In following yeah. up to that. Uh, I mm-hmm. just want to know, um, do you think that the lack of uh, attention given to women's football by the federation or by you know by by the ministry uh, the, somewhat to another reinforces a social stigma that uh-huh. causes um, less people interested in participating in female uh, female participants in football sebenarnya uh, ramai wanita ramai perempuan-perempuan yang nak bermain bola ni ramai antara uh-huh. pergi dapatkan dia orang groom dia orang bawa dia orang dan di orang kata bila orang kata nak memertabatkan bola sepak tu ada sebenarnya wakil-wakil yang boleh buat sebenarnya cuma nya uh, tak tahulah mungkin access jelah mm, ni lack of access lah i mean yes. like lack of competition lack of fields courts which is safe for women inisiatif hmm. DMA tu sendiri pun perlu juga janganlah hanya sekadar mengadakan tapi tidak uh, memperkasakan mungkin <laughs> Kau, kau, how's, how's the, how's the, how's the, how's the feedback like for female participants? Because I'm, you know, I'm a very shy person and I don't talk much. But in your, <laughs> aren't you married, bro? <laughs> But one, one, I married once, so okay. Yeah. So, uh, for for, I mean, in in your group, right? Like, uh, how do you how do you encourage uh, female participation? Because when I was there, I saw quite a few number 
of uh, female participants um is there an active uh you know um activity or program that you do to encourage female participation in your group mm dia macam ni uh when we first started out semua tu uh we never decline any anyone i think that's that's always that's been the plus point of okay. our programs so when we don't say when we say eh hey, join je and then they're like oh tak lah is it all boys apa semua tu it's like come lah like, I, i saw it, I just encourage lah come lah let just mind je and then you know everyone uh, apa the, and also i got lucky lah in a way because like the group of people that we have are very welcoming and very warm uh, like i give you an example lah, like kairul nizam lah kairul nizam he has been a fantastic person uh, throughout this whole experience lah he uh, dear is ham and Uh, so many people have been so welcoming to you know not only the female participants but even the participants yang kaki bangku you know uh, but to answer your question kan to say that we have an active uh, like specialized program seperti tu uh, we actually want tak ada we actually wanted to tapi the person the pe- the group of people that we try to macam encourage to take the initiative they are busy you know macam they have their lives we did uh, give them the opportunity tapi obviously uh, they don't want to take the opportunity it's okay lah because uh, in the end uh, people have their uh, choices that they want to make and um, macam we cannot force people to to do this uh, we cannot force people to do uh, things that they don't want to do lah in the end they want to be participants but they don't want to be part of the administration the core tak apalah it's okay we move on lah okay. it, it's, it's, it's about uh, ni lah macam <coughs> as a segue kan you know it's just like macam banyak orang wants to be uh, a, a, a speaker, you know everyone wants to be a speaker. But does anyone wants to be the host? And does anyone wants to be the producer? Does anyone wants to be the uh, the other auxiliary punya function? No, everyone in the end nak jadi nak jadi pemain, tapi tak, tak ada banyak orang nak jadi organizer. Ya lah betul betul. Aku terasa bila kau cakap cantu bro. <laughs> aku, pun, aku pun tembak tembak diri siri aku juga aku selalu buat benda kat 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 kelab house. <laughs> hey, um, okay talking about this talking about a lot of people who want who is interested to be speakers um for the people down there you know um listeners uh if you guys have any opinions or anything to share uh in regards to the remarks <laughs> in the in regards to whatever Carl and Jamie has said please feel free to just um indicate to me wave a hand or something like that and I'll uh, bring you up uh um uh, uh before that uh Carl uh Carl Jamie have, have you guys worked together before this oh, in a program uh yes ada ada a few uh, i think dua dua ke tiga collaboration kita buat uh, tiga. Tiga, tiga sorry <laughs> <laughs> I I always keep track. Uh, uh, bagus ya. Yeah. I actually have the data right in front of me. Uh, Strong. As a wow. reference. Um, <laughs> tiga. Uh, I think I think one one thing about one thing really uh, I really enjoy working with Jamie is because um, Jamie asked me uh, when I check out. Okay, let's let's do a collaboration. You know, I I handle the field. I bought a jersey. You know, I have the ball. I get I get volunteer referees. Apa semua to to participate. And and then she asked me the question. Uh, is it no tackle rule football? And then I ask her, what kind of football do you do you guys want to play? Oh, just normal rules lah. Okay, jump. Tak ada hal. So, <laughs> no, serious. We, yeah, 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 yeah. We 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 equal to what you want. You know, we we tak nak datang sebagai satu penjajah. We, we just want to help. <laughs> you know, yeah. We just want to help you guys to to. Uh, we just want to help you ladies to like. You know, like let, let's let, let's grow. You know, let, let's grow the community. You know, get more people to participate. You know, mm-hmm. and so on so forth. Betul, betul. Setuju, setuju. <laughs> so actually, because, um, yelah, uh, I mean like, for, kalau ditanya apa pendapat I, uh, so, uh, I actually teruja, oh iya, ada orang nak offer lah main bola padang besar ni, uh, mana nak jumpa. And then, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and then, uh, it's worse. <laughs> But then again, yeah, and I pun tahu sebab padang harga Padang di waktu malam, oh boleh tahan oh. jugalah. Uh, so, yeah. untuk untuk I uh, ber, berkemampuan untuk book padang tu memang macam ay, bahaya, susah jugalah orang kata kan. Especially when it comes to kalau yang padang besar and then uh, and then that, that, kebetulan Carl pun uh, apa, uh, bertanya hari tu and then it's like oh, okay why not. I mean like I, I pun tak nak lah macam demanding oh saya nak padang sebelas-sebelas tidaklah juga. 
Tapi macam why, I mean it's a it's a good uh, orang kata permulaan lah introduction for for these ladies also to play football and then to to get the orang kata padang pun memang best padang pun memang superb. Yeah, why not proceed? I mean like this is the opportunity and I think less than few days dah dapat orang nak main and then kita pun manage to buat tiga team rotate and I mean big kudos to Kaz and the gang jugalah sebab jersey yeah, ada uh, apa referee pun ada and everything photographer <laughs> yes photographer dok-dok perempuan kan semua pantang gambar so macam full package siapa yang tak nak I mean like it's a orang kata peluang keemasan lah yang diberikan Alhamdulillah memang thank thank you lah Kaz <laughs> I hope no, you guys so working. Growing. I hope mm. to see you guys working together it, again. Um, we you, got a speaker you know, here. Yeah. Uh, Go you ahead. know, sorry, sorry, sorry. Just, just to add on Jamie, your point again about price. Uh, yeah. we from from us, by the way, but we actually have a policy that we will not charge more than twenty five ringgit. So, but we did a research uh, over time when people uh, apa, people are more hesitant not to attend or not to pay more than twenty five ringgit because kita ingat people datang from a certain distance. From Betul? a certain distance tu, dia orang kena bayar tol, dia orang kena bayar gas. Kalau yeah. dia orang jenis yang lepak awal, mm. uh, dia orang akan makan awal, lepas tu uh, main bola, bayar. Dan dia orang akan lepas main bola, kalau dia lepak punya session, dia orang akan bayar lagi duit. So, it mm-hmm. can go up to more than 50 to 80 ringgit per person spending money on that one night. Betul. So, we we always do our best to control the price. That's mm. why it's, for us, guys, it's been very difficult to find sponsors, to find people to macam you know, subsidize the price, apa semua tu, because there's a lot of costing lah, macam like, obviously, the photographer is one of them, the field is another, uh, hmm. you know, as organizers pun, macam memang ciput lah, uh, bayar, uh, bayaran. Uh, but... Secara jujur, belum lagi uh, boleh mengaku, mengaku keuntungan. That's <laughs> <laughs> bad, bad business, isn't it? I think you've been in business for I mean, more like, than five years, right? I mean, <laughs> like, I'm, Uh, for me, it's kalau nawai tu you nak cari duit, then probably, I mean like of course I want to, but then rasa macam, ish, ni halal ke duit aku ambil lebih ni lah. So, to that extent lah. So, I mean like of course, kalau ada duit extra pun, it, uh, I will use it to rotate for the next booking. So, hmm. at least tak adalah sakit keluar duit kita, itulah. No, it's 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 about macam like we are being, okay, okay this, is, this sounds really selfish, but kita organisers. You know, mm-hmm. we have to have put, we have to put a value on ourselves juga. You yeah, know, macam true. money ball, macam yeah. macam money ball. You know, the value represents uh, how much we have done for 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 Your work. things for for the work that we we doing we doing. You know, like for the jerseys, like for I give you an example, for, macam the jerseys kan. Aku aku yang basuh, aku aku yang lipat. Betul. You know, <laughs> you know I mean like for bibs, uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, and also, if if I treat that to myself, what how would I treat uh, potential employees of 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 our initiatives? Betul betul. Setuju. Mm-hmm. Okay, sorry for diverting. Sorry, Bear, for taking your time. <laughs> All right, Bear. Bear, are you still there, mate? Hi. Hi. Okay, um, good. Share with yes. us. Ah, uh, J- uh, is the name Jamie? Yes, Jamie oh, here. Hi, Jamie. How are you? Good. 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 Okay, I just have one question regarding the women's football. Uh. Mm-hmm. Um, apart from social stigma, that uh, mm-hmm. also some say discrimination, is mm-hmm. there any pressure from very like conservative organization that say that women should not play football? Women, I, 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 I'm not going to the point that women should stay in the kitchen, but they say that women should not play football because football is a very uh, hooligan game, all these things. Because the main thing <laughs> is that in my country, in Brunei, Basically, mm. women are not it's not just not encouraged to play football, but it's almost to say it's banned. Oh, yes, mm. it's banned. to the point that because last time the Islamic clerics once one say, women mm. should not involved in things that is too how you say, ah, kasar lah orang ah they say kasar lah don't do, don't do things that is very uh, demoralized and also throw shame on women. You see. So mm. the thing is that in Malaysia, I know that there are women you know, in play football. Why? You know, because if, sometimes when I pass by Sunway College last time, there are mm-hmm. there's a women football in session. Yeah, mm-hmm. play football. But the thing is mm-hmm. that apart from the social stigma, is there mm-hmm. any pressure from any organization, whatever you name it, 
they will tell you that eh kau janganlah main bola kau ni wanita boleh hormat sikit tak adab something like that <laughs> um setakat ni tak ada Cuma, mm-hmm. uh, I mean like daripada mana-mana pihak lah Kebanyakannya mm-hmm. macam oh oh ada ada perempuan main bola Ada perempuan ni uh, Probably macam paling kuat pun uh, Yang akan dipertikaikan bila sesuatu Macam ialah macam fans Malaysia Yang mana tim-tim Malaysia kan Bila uh, apa, bertanding di peringkat yang lebih tinggi So uh-huh. bila kalah, kalah yang memalukan ku, uh, tu terus cakap kalau kita baca kat komen-komen netizen ni, dia terus cakap lah, tak payah main bola lah, gantung boot jadi apa, beranak, kahwin, uh, itu je. But then, <laughs> <laughs> ah, itu ada uh, uh, biasa. Uh, tapi, but, to, tapi it has not come to the stage that Setakat uh, ni uh, tak ada. Uh, it has tak not tak pernah stage. counter lagi lah. Alhamdulillah oh. sepanjang I involve ni, Uh, paling kuat pun yang kalau yang jenis yang uh, positif <coughs> yang memang menggalakkan women's football ni uh-huh. dia, dia akan cakap why not you train dulu uh, belajar sepak proper pergilah train dengan mana-mana orang yang boleh uh-huh. membantu yeah. I I receive a very good uh, feedback lah positive feedback lah sepanjang okay. being involved with football or futsal uh, apa organised or setakat ni setak- Alhamdulillah lah tak ada yang negatif sangat lah mm-hmm. setakat But- belum Mulut-mulut ni uh, kita masuk kiri apa tinggal kiri keluar dengan kanan lah. Ah, bad, bad. Hmm. In 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 Malaysia, bad. There's no institutional de- de- decree lah. Kan, yeah, there's uh, no institutional uh, decree. Stop. Yeah, no, there's no institutional decree. Thank goodness. But the thing is that because sometimes right, we always tend to like to uh, we always like to tend to compare like, hey, this one is actually good for us. This country implement why why it does not implement to to us. So you see hmm. because. I know my country lah, uh, the position towards uh, football and also women's play football but I will not go in deeper into that, that will be another topic. So I was mm. wondering, is in Malaysia, is that uh, why there is no institutional decree, is there any like any organisation or so ever, if they say a woman play football, they will say, Oi, go balik lah, go buat main bola ma tu 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 je, go lang ni, sebagai wanita, go kena ha- jaga ada, jaga soli, jaga apa, No. I uh, actually you just remind me uh, there's one time I play with my company lah my colleagues and okay. then we did join this one friendly lah with this I don't know lah senior-senior tak tahu lah probably ex-national or ex-state players mm-hmm. so uh, because my uh, my my office uh, mm-hmm. we have we have mixed mixed team lah so uh-huh. me and two Two uh two ladies uh also play with the guys. Okay. Uh, tengah main baru nak start kick off and then suddenly one of the uh, opponents player cakap, why perempuan main dekat sini pergi lah main tempat lain. Saya eh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then my my colleagues pula expert so dia dia tanya Jamie what's happening? Nah, nah, it's okay we just play. Oh. And then suddenly when I start to pass cross pass and my colleagues actually scoring the the first goal oh dia orang dah marah dah terus oh. dia punya mulut kalau perempuannya mulut lah saya like, eh ya betul ni eh. kata ex state player kamu lah tak koyak kot mulut masih <laughs> mulut masih lah mulut masih lah mulut masih lah oh uh, so and then they start play rough against us okay. not to the guys to okay. the to to us to the ladies to the and then um a few of my colleagues the guys are also helping us out and then i managed to score one goal mm, so it's like oh good, remember dah remember dah panas dah so it's like oh okay dia dah start main kasar dia dah start bahasa-bahasa dia memang indah lah mm. so it's like okay okay and then out of nowhere kita have time <coughs> Uh, tiba-tiba bertumbuk dengan klik ai. Oh kat tepi. Eh, ya betul. Ni betul tak koyak saya. Okey lah. So the half the the second half uh, kita main and then yeah our team 190. So nanti tak kalah. <laughs> nice zero dia. Nice. Nice. Nice zero. Sikit tadi <laughs> macam UAE lawan Malaysia eh. Alamak. <laughs> oi, jang- oi, memang inbound kenangan my memory lah. <laughs> Uh, but uh, but anyway, Jamie, just but, one, but but anyway, Jamie, just think ah. Uh, um, mm-hmm. uh, there are some people perceive perceive that uh, women's football in Malaysia currently only focus into urban areas. Is that true? Mm, urban areas meaning that the big big cities or what? Big big cities lah. 
Mm. That means to say that, that that means to say that um uh, there might be some perception that rural area you have not go to the kampung kampung and see uh, mm. girls play football before. Can I can Actually, I can, can, can I can I can uh, yeah. answer this? Sure. Boleh boleh. Uh, I think Silakan. I think I think one of the main reasons for this bear is because um I think infrastructure. Uh, infrastructure in urban Malaysia is uh, a lot more uh, diversified. There's, there's there's more opportunities. There's more access mm-hmm. to uh, foot uh, infrastructure if you want to play football or futsal, mm-hmm. and you don't mm-hmm. find like you don't find like that here. Um, where I'm from, Bear is in Kemaman. Yeah, okay. Um, we have we have futsal courts, but it's under maintained and people I- ignore them. It now it's Ooh. become you know, it, it, those those courts are practically haunted. But now. Um, Yeah, so we don't have the kind of access that uh what you would find in KL or PJ or in Penang or in JB, you know. So um, I think that's one of the main reasons. If you want to ask me whether or not there would be interest, if there are courts, would there be people playing? Definitely, we have a few private courts here in Kemaman that charge a few ringgit for you know rentals, mm-hmm. and um, we have female teams coming in and playing. In so, fact, recently we have female teams coming into play. In okay. fact, recently, uh, Pahang Rangers mm-hmm. they organized a selection for their female futsal teams, and um, and uh, there were a few uh, female futsal mm-hmm. players from Kemaman who took the trouble of getting a van and you know, and getting a driver and bringing them all the way to Kuantan. Mm-hmm. So that so so I I don't, I don't the the fact that it's urban it has nothing to do with It's always it has nothing to do with the individual. Mm-hmm. I think it's mm-hmm. more of a access, access, uh, access, exposure. So that means to mm-hmm. say that with the access and exposure, even in the rural areas. So that means to say that the mindset is not really about women's football. Only focus on the urban area. Those who have been exposed to say the internet being exposed internationally. It's not the case, right? Um, mm, I would say kalau ikut kan yang aktif ah. Uh... Apa ni? Uh, football pun kalau yang untuk bola sepak lah. Uh, rasanya dekat Sabah lagi lagi meriah kot kat kawasan kampung-kampung, right. kat kilang-kilang. Yeah. Uh, so that's one of the reason kenapa sebelum ni uh, perkampungan bola sepak diadakan di Sabah hanya kerana Uh, kononnya lah ramai uh, players yang boleh didapati dan diambil daripada sana but at the end of the day uh, players tu jugalah yang dipusing-pusing sampai lah orang tu yang main football orang tu lah juga yang main futsal so uh, <laughs> betul setuju setuju betul betul uh, so banyak bany- sebenarnya sebenarnya nak katakan hanya tertumpu di kawasan urban tak juga dia lebih kepada um, I think um, penglibatan uh, seseorang player dan juga ialah bergantung kepada kalau ada untuk dikembangkan atau apa semua ya tak tak ada isu pun kata hanya base uh, hanya tertumpu kepada kawasan urban saja hmm okey hmm. tak ada okey Alright, um, guys, it's already uh, 10 or 6. It's beyond the uh, one hour already, ma- already one hour mark. Uh, we should be ending this. So um, I'm going to wrap this up with a final question. And this question has something to do with probably our next Twitter spaces, space, spaces, spaces session. <laughs> okay. okay, the question is, fund the sport, not the athlete. What do you make of this statement, Carl? Why don't you go first? Fund the sport, not the athlete. What do you fund make of this statement? Fund the sport. Uh, basically, fund fund the 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 industry lah, from grassroots to professional lah. You the, agree to this? Yeah. So there's no hesitation from me. Uh, sorry, because like uh, when you fund the sports, you build athletes. If you build at athletes. Pasal elite athlete saja Orang The democratization of uh, of Sports itself Itu macam mana nak pergi uh, Like When you when we look at uh, uh, Apa Western countries Apa semua tu kan There's always a sense of belonging Towards the sports kan Because like Kalau kalah ke Inside the professional semua tu They can go back to Different uh, apa, Supporting a different uh, Sport You so know let macam me, let, 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 me, let me Let me ask you this then mm. Then um, Do you think it's best for us To send our elite athletes Outside 
for them to better the performance or is it best that we develop the infrastructure here in our country? Okay, kalau macam tu, develop the uh, the infrastructure inside the country lah. Sebab kalau macam tu, you create more job opportunities, you create a better uh, pool. Lepas tu, at the same time pun, you know, macam uh, most of you who follow me will know this lah. Macam like, I'm a big advocate for grassroots, non-professional me side. So macam rebuild the the the, the grassroots pillars and then and then slowly we'll, we'll get that lah. Not only kita dapat uh, elite athletes, but we get elite uh industry players off the pitch you know commentators uh producers uh lawyers sport lawyers sport science apa semua tu sorry did i answer your question yes yes you did thanks okay. mate jamie um i want to ask yeah. you like uh do you think that if you had more uh role models like people like intern sarah right uh people mm-hmm. like uh steph Right, mm-hmm. who are who would be you know i mean more more of these role models do you think that it would inevitably create more interest among females to participate in your sport mm perlu ada muka-muka yang orang kata sudah well known dan juga uh, bagus uh, perlu juga ada role model yang baru uh, untuk kita popularkan ataupun membang, apa, menjenamakan balik uh, sukan bola sepak wanita dan yelah untuk uh, futsal juga. Sebabnya um, kalau kita hanya bersandar kepada yang ada uh, probably orang cakap alah balik dia ni sahaja. Uh, I mean like macam kalau kita tengok list pemain yang aktif pun itu sahaja. So kita nak meramaikan lagi. Kita bukan so nak ada think, satu. Mm-hmm. So hmm. so you think it's best so you think it's best for us to fund or invest in the athlete lab. Mm. Because inevitably what you say mm-hmm. is that once we invest in the athlete what it would mm-hmm. do it would uh, enrich the sport. Is that what you say? Untuk perempuan, untuk untuk perempuan sebenarnya kena dua-dua, bukan untuk untuk satu satu bahagian saja. Sebab banyak perkara perlu sebab okey eh, kalau memang, kita tengok memang tu, memang ah. dua-dua Jamie, tapi I nak ah. tahu yang where should the bulk of the investment go? I know dua-dua mesti ada. Hmm. Where the bulk of the investment would go for women, for women sports. Untuk 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 sports tu sendirilah. Kalau ah. kalau hanya kepada atlet Uh, let's say lah, uh, atlet tu di situ saja. So, uh, apa terjadi pada yang kita nak lahirkan lagi ramai? So, uh, kalau hanya tertumpu pada satu, uh, kita hanya belanja, apa? Kita hanya belanjakan kepada se- seorang atlet, uh, bagaimana atlet-atlet yang lain? So, perlu ada dari segi pelaburan untuk sukan tu sendiri. Okay. Uh, dan juga dari segi infrastruktur tu pun penting lah. Kena sama okay. pergi lah. Ha. Okay lah, let's put it this way. Let's say if you just have a hundred million, where should the bulk go? How much percent of that funds that you have should go mm-hmm. to funding athletes or funding the sport? Funding the sport of, uh, I would should say. Should be the bulk. Yeah. Okay. Yep. Right. Okay. Invest in, dia macam, dia macam ni, invest in the kementerian, bukan menteri banggang. <laughs> <laughs> You're evil, man. <laughs> Kau yang minta aku keluarkan jahat aku malam ni boleh lah. <laughs> at the end eh. Benda, benda ni kau selit at the end eh. Apa? Benda ni kau selit at the end eh. Oh lah wah. Okay lah. It, it, took, it, eh, it took four lockdowns to get me this panas ready lah. <laughs> Patience aku dah kurang dah. When you need to release it, just release lah. I don't bother lah. <laughs> Okay guys um uh it's already 10 coming go coming to 10:15. Thank you very much for joining me at the first uh um program uh, called Sports Culture and Excellence uh, which is a program in conjunction with uh VC Sukanegara 2030. Uh for everyone the listeners as well um if you guys enjoy this thank you very much. If you don't you know you can say you can mention it on uh, my Twitter space. I would really like uh any kind of criticism to uh, enrich this further. That's number one. Number two is um, log on to vsn2030.my because they have a, a platform whereby you guys can start sharing insights and opinions to shape the future of Malaysian sports. And I think it's, an oppo- it's a wonderful opportunity 
because it's an opportunity that provides um, uh, all Malaysians a hand in shaping uh, what our sports is going to be like uh, in the future, or at least until 2030. So thank you very much. Have a wonderful evening. Have a wonderful weekend. And hope to see you guys again uh, next week. Carl, Bear, Jay, Jamie, thank you very much again. I hope to see you guys once the lockdown is over. We can kick Inshallah. some ball. All right. Thank you Inshallah. for inviting. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you for inviting. Thank you for inviting. See you next week. Assalamualaikum. Siapa right. yang lepat lepat dekat clubhouse? Jom. 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 <laughs> Bye. 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 Bye.